two-way relationship, as I explained, right, to ask questions. Every player and every parent has a right to ask a question. They have a right to a truthful answer. We are a baseball family, which Mike and I, that's what we preach. Last season, one of the other things I said on the first day, and I said, I've said this every year, on every team that I've coached, um, Zach, you'll remember this. Half the team knew each other, half the team didn't. Right? Right? Am I right? And Zach, should I tell everybody your nickname? Yeah. Quacker, as he told me. Um, everybody was kind of looking at each other. Like, I don't know who is this. And, you know, at seven years old, you're really near. You know, just kind of looking around. And I said, I know all of you don't know each other. And Zach spoke up. And he said, I know those guys, but I don't know those guys. <laughs> and I was glad he said that, because it was the perfect segue to what I needed to say. And my comment was this. There is a reason. You may not know it now. You may not know it next year. You may realize it 25 years down the road. There is a reason we are here together as a team. This team is now a family. Did I say that? Zach? Yeah? Caden? Did I say that? Matthew? You better say that. Nolan? Did I say that? Good answer. Did your dad shake his head? Over there? Good answer. And that is, we're a huge proponent of that, and we are incorporating that into the NSOB and NSOS girls, I'm not forgetting. Um, we are tolerance based. What does that mean? It means that if we're doing drills and we're doing lessons, and a player comes up to me or any of the coaches and says, I feel lightheaded, I feel dizzy, whatever, you're done. Sit down. Okay? We're not doing that. We don't do that. Okay? So that's what tolerance based means. You do as much as you can. It's going to happen in the beginning. You take lessons, it's going to happen, and it's okay. Because the more you practice and the more you go, your stamina will build up. That's where the honesty comes in. You come up to me and you say, Coach, I don't feel well. I got a headache. I'm, tired. I'm dizzy. We see you. Okay? Psychology based. That's my major. We, I preach, we preach the mental and psychological side of the game. We teach routines to get the switches on. Right, Zach? Bronson? Where's Bronson? Right there. Right next to that. Switch, right? Turn your switch on. It's all part of the mental. Game. Huge, huge, huge. That's being prepared. You, you can be prepared physically, but if you are not prepared mentally, you're not gonna you're not gonna perform. So we get into that. At a low, at a low level, so take another shot. Uh, we guarantee that all of our players will be the best prepared player on the field, like I said before. I can't, there's only one Mike Trapp. There's only one Clayton Kershaw. There's only one Nolan Ryan. No one is going to be these guys. You're going to be the best player you can be. That's our goal. To bring out all the talent and use all of your physical abilities, it's up to your physical abilities, to be the best player you can be. And when, you're, when you know you're the best player you can be, that's when you have fun. Right? So that's our job. Okay? Questions? Wow. That's pretty impressive. Why and how we are different? Where'd you go? What are you doing? <laughs> Just keep you on your toes. You're supposed to know what you're doing. Just keep you on your toes, coach. As I said in the beginning, NSOB is not a part time business for the owners. It's, it's, it's going to be my livelihood. I hope. I hope. And with the help of all of you, hopefully that happens. We do hour-long sessions, not 30 minutes. I think someone has a, well, there might be someone in here with a story about that, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. You pay $45, $50, whatever it is for a half-hour lesson. You spend the first 5, 10, 15 minutes warming up, doing this, doing that, and your lesson is actually 10 or 15 minutes long. It's useless. Useless. That 
the science has been proven. Okay, so that's why we stick with that. If someone really, 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 really wants just a half hour, I, I won't say no. But it's more effective when it's not. We do not try to make any player something or someone they are not. It is our job to take what they have and create the best player they can be. I hear that a lot. We have an old school mentality. Got some old school old guys. Old guys at least. Yeah. Yeah, we use some of the most modern approaches and methods in the industry with science authenticity and biomechanics, which I will get into a little bit. We believe in sandlot learning as well as classroom learning, as long as field learning. Sandlot learning. Anybody have any idea what that might mean? Coach Sherry? <laughs> 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 what it means is that it's been proven and through coaching and scientifically proven that kids learn better in groups of small groups um, as opposed to one-on-one -on -one because they have fun with it and they strive to be as good as the next person or the best person in that group or they learn things from people in that group and it's as a coach for as long as I've been a coach I've always believed in coaching groups of kids, small groups. Yeah. There's another part to that too. Sandlot. Who's seen the movie Sandlot? I love that. They're killing me small. <laughs> How many times did I say that last year? Oh my god. 20. 20? Yeah. <laughs> They're killing me small. They're killing me. I said 100. 100? Yeah, I said it a lot. Um, but I didn't talk much. Right? That's the rumor. That was the rumor. That's the rumor going around that I don't talk about. Um, to take what Coach Sherry said one step further. When you start to learn the drills and you start to practice with each other, you work harder. Your friends, you're in a group with your friends, you're doing drills, you're doing a towel drill, which we'll go over. You're learning from each other. You're looking at your buddy and he's doing it maybe a little bit better than you. What do you want to do now? I want to do it just as well as he did. It's just as effective as anything. And when you take all of these drills with you and you start to do them, that's why the parents are so important, watch what happens. Because when Noah learns how to do a towel drill and he goes and takes a friend, he says, here, watch what I do. Who taught you that? Who taught you that? Who's going to teach you that? You. You. Coach Pete taught you. When no one goes to school and everybody sees how improved he is, right, and he's wearing his t-shirt like everybody's going to wear on Monday, um, <laughs> and they say, how did you get so much better? And he said, well, my dad. My dad gave me special lessons. I learned new things and new ways to do things. That's Sandlot learning. And all of a sudden, everybody's looking at no one. It's the same thing with my son. Both my sons. That one's Nicholas. He's fine. He'll be going to coach and coach next year. Right? 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 <laughs> Sleeping in? No? Are you awake? Okay. Just check. That's what Sandlot learning is. We are teachers of baseball preparation, injury prevention, baseball skills, life skills, and the mental approach to the game. We use humor mostly at our shows. A lot. A lot. Yeah. We get pretty goofy sometimes. If there's a camera there, we'd probably wind up with a sitcom. Water balloons. Yeah, there's no question. At least it's going by. Yeah. Um, we engage the players, encourage questions, and feedback. Had a ritual. I've had a ritual every year that I've coached a team. Before every game, Bronson, what do we do before every game? What do I do before every game? We get in a group, right? And I kneel down. We talk about the game, right? Talk about the game. Yep. Before and after every single game. The team comes around, Coach Mike and I get on our hand, on our knees, eye level, and we talk about what's about to happen. At the end of every game, we do the same thing. Because I want the feedback. I want to tell them. I want them to tell me what they think, what they feel. What do we need to improve on? What did we do well? Okay. 
Uh, we have players' rights. We'll go over those. And coaches' code of ethics. Any questions? Eh, guys are easy. Um, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is what we do. This is how we do things. Um, th I'm very proud to say, honored to say that this picture, where Steve, they took this picture and made it into a plaque with a poem, gave it to me at the end of the year. And Coach Mike and Coach Jim, one of my absolute, it, I, I treasure it because that, that's why we do it. Those moments to me are absolutely priceless. Who's that, Zach? Yeah. Is that you? Yeah. Are you laughing? Yeah. Is that a surprise? No. <laughs> no, not at all. Okay? Next. Players build rights. Very important. Players have the right to objective, science-based information and instruction. Players have the right to authentic, patient, caring, and unconditional coaching. Players have the right to a positive sports life skills learning experience. Players have the right to health first preparation, competition, and recovery. This is how we train. We train for preparation. We train for recovery, which means injury preventive. Players have the right to ask questions and receive truthful answers. And I will tell you this. Sometimes, truth can be kind of You'll get the truth. Sugar coat. You deserve the truth. You earned it. Okay? Players have the right to have it. That's the biggest thing. Coaches beliefs. Players are born with the need to learn. Players seek experiences that build self-esteem. Extremely, extremely important. Optimism enhances a player's performance in learning. That's why we always stay positive. Never negative. Diversity is the key to a player's learning and growth. Here's my comment about that. Don't play just one sport. You're too young for that. Um, how many of you play other sports? Good. Keep doing it. Here's why. Gives you a break from baseball, which everybody needs, and you build other muscles other parts of your body that are also needed for baseball. Do not, at this young of an age, who's the oldest kid here? Who is, do we have a 10, 12 year old here? Well, I know you. How many, is it three? She's still here though. <laughs> um, maybe, I'm gonna say late teens before you go and say okay, we we'll focus on this. It's important, very important. Players learn best when their entire support system is part of the process. That is the parents. You are the support system. So are we. But we don't live with you all. Thank God for that. You are the support system. We are positive when we work with these kids, whether it's coaching in a game or lessons. We need you to do the same. That's why I strongly encourage that when you come to a lesson, at least maybe the first couple, you take pictures and you take video. Because now you know what to work with. When you learn the towel drill, there's nine different guys look at me like I'm crazy. Who remember to bring towels? Yeah, we'll, have to, we'll have to, we'll, we'll, we'll read some. I have a couple extras. Towels are huge. So that's up to you guys to say, what did you say yesterday about the how many times, how many repetitions on the playing the games Xbox. versus on the Xbox? Yeah, yeah. yeah we're going to talk about number yeah. of repetitions. Yeah. 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 And it seems like a lot of repetition, but when you think about how many times you do something on a video game, it pales 